What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another video. The other day I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw a whole bunch of videos of people making espressos and it looked really cool and they were making like latte art and stuff and it was like a beautiful art. I was getting emotional watching that and I was like, I really want to do that. So I hopped on the internet and I was like, espresso machine, I want to buy an espresso machine. I look at the espresso machines, they're like $4,000, like the cheaper ones were like 500 bucks. I was like, this is crazy. I want an espresso machine, but I'm not willing to spend that much money on espresso. So I went to Amazon and I ended up finding some stuff cheaper, but it turns out you don't just get away with an espresso machine. You need an espresso machine, you need a coffee grinder, you need like tools to like make the espresso and everything. So I ended up buying everything I needed and I think I got a pretty good deal on the stuff. I think I got the best budget set up for espresso. So today I'm gonna show you exactly what I got and how I like it. I've had it for about, I don't know, it must be like five or six months now. And I'll let you know what it's like living with it. So this is my little coffee bar area over here and this is my setup. So I've got this, this is what I got, I got a Gemi. It's, I think it's called pronounced Gebi, Gebi, Jebi? Not really sure, but I think it's Gebi. And it's a pretty simple espresso machine and it only cost me $120. So I'll go through a little bit of a review of this in a second. I got this coffee grinder right here. It's a Mueller from Austria and this thing is pretty awesome. I first tried to use one of the spinning blade cheap $20 grinders and that just didn't give me the right consistency every time. So I ended up spending the extra money and getting this thing. You know, I'll do a little review of this as well, but you can adjust the fineness of the grain and all that um, right here. And then you just put the coffee beans at the top. And I think it looks pretty cool compared to a lot of the other grinders, which are like these big boxes with a big thing on top. This thing looks sleek. I like how it's tinted here and it's all like black and like slim. So it's really cool. And uh, I have no complaints about this. My espresso stand station where all my accessories are. I've got this uh, espresso puck thing. I forget what it's called, a basket. It comes with a machine and uh, that I just put right here. I had to buy what's called a tamper. This is the tamper that I bought. I wanted something really nice. This is actually probably the main reason I wanted to get an espresso machine because I, I always wanted to like press the espresso um, or technically it's called tamping the espresso. Um, and so I bought this. Uh, and this one is actually really cool because it is made in Italy. It's, it's from a brand called Mota. Mota? Mota? Not really sure how you pronounce it. But it's got this nice wooden handle, it's really weighty, and it just feels really nice to use. I also got myself this funnel, so this goes right on top of the espresso puck. That way when you're grinding the beans and it's going in there, it doesn't go all over the place. The next step, when you distribute the beans, it helps keep everything inside and not make a huge mess. So that's another accessory I had to buy on the side. And then I also got these spoons and these are little espresso spoons and they just came with some of the cups that I bought. In addition to all that, I had to get this stainless steel uh, milk frothing cup that is used for when you, you know, foam your milk, steam your milk over here. Um, and that was an extra expense. I also had this little metal cup. I didn't buy it, I just had it, but I used that to purge my steam wand. I also had to buy this little container with a stick on it. It's called a knock box, and this is so you can knock out your coffee grinds from your espresso puck once you're done making your espresso. Um, so that's another thing I had to buy. Okay, and then you might be thinking that's it, but it's not because on top of all this, you also need to buy special little cups because a regular mug will not fit in here. A regular cup will not fit in here when you have this place there. So you actually need to buy smaller cups, whether or not you want to. I got it on Amazon, I think it was like $15 or $20 for two of these. And then I bought these, I upgraded because I wanted something really cool. And this is from a company called Fellow, which makes really cool looking espresso tools and machines and things like that. And I got this, and this is a double walled ceramic mug. It came in a set of two for I think like 40 bucks or 50 bucks, and I accidentally broke one. So I'm pretty sad about that, I had to buy more. But I really love this thing, it looks amazing. It looks so stealthy and cool. And uh, so that's pretty much everything in the setup. So now let's go into some more detail and dive into how this stuff actually works and how I use it and what the whole process is like when you do make an espresso. So you can see, yeah, and this is an apartment. Okay, so we're in an apartment. This is a pretty small space, but I still managed to fit in a whole espresso setup here, which means if I can do it, you could probably do it too. All right, so 
let's get into the whole espresso making process and a review of all the stuff that I bought at the same time. Now, this Gebi machine that I have is pretty good. I like everything about it. It's, it's nice. The only thing I maybe don't like so much is it's kind of loud and it vibrates a lot, which you'll see when I do make the espresso. But anyways, the first step when making an espresso is hitting the on button. And then you have to wait about five minutes or so for this to get up to temperature, which, you know, is kind of annoying, but you just wake up in the morning, hit the button, and make sure it's ready to go. The other thing is you gotta make sure there's water in there. So you can just pull off this little back thing right here, pretty simple, and then you pop it open like that, and you can put water in there. Not very complicated. So as you can see, this is coming up to temperature. Now, what I usually do if I'm making an espresso and I'm waiting for this to come up to temperature is I get started by grinding my beans. So for espresso, you usually want a finer grind. So I have mine set all the way to like two, which is pretty fine. And then I turn it on and here you can like select how much, you know, how long you want to grind for, like how much grinds you want. But you also have this little thing down here. It's like a button and you push that in and it grinds the beans automatically. So that way you can just press in the puck. And give it a couple taps to get the extra stuff out. There you go. After I got my grinds, I put them here in my little contraption of a accessory stand. And I take this thing, put it in here, and you kind of mix up the beans or the grinds and it evenly distributes it so that it gets tamped properly. And then when I'm done, I'm just stick it back in here. Boop, there you go. After I've done that, my next step is to grab my knock box. I take off the funnel like so and as you can see I have some excess grinds which I just wipe off like that and I know it's a little bit wasteful I'm sure there's like a lot of espresso like nuts out there who are gonna be like oh my god you're wasting perfectly good beans I usually don't have that much excess I usually get it get it right okay guys so I don't, don't like comment about that <laughs> anyways so now that I've got a nice distributed espresso grind and an even layer on top I'm gonna grab my tamper Next step is to tamp our espresso. So we're just gonna nice even pressure until it feels a firm resistance. There you go. One thing you'll notice is that I keep this towel here all the time and anytime I use any of these tools, this one or this one, I put it here before I put it back. And the reason is I wipe it down. You can see that there tends to be a little bit of, as you can see, there tends to be a little bit of espresso dust that gets left on the tools. So I just put them here, I wipe them down like so, so they're nice and clean, and then I put them back. So you can see there's all this dust on there, so I just wipe it down, wipe her down, and put them back where it belongs. There you go. So, and that actually brings up a really good point. Making espresso can be really messy if you're not careful and you don't clean up after yourself every time because coffee grinds get literally everywhere and this whole place will just be covered with coffee grinds. So I actually have two towels. I have this towel which I use to wipe down my machine and all the coffee grind stuff. And then I have this towel which I use to wipe down my tools. Um, so I'm even getting some coffee grinds getting it all over the place already. All right, so the next step, once you have tamped your espresso and your machine is up to temperature, as you can see here, we are up to temperature. We are going to stick the puck in and make some espresso. So now I'm gonna put the espresso puck in, just like so, boom. Then I'm gonna use my cool, clear glass here, and then just hit this brewing espresso button right here.
All right, now that I've pulled my espresso, I'm going to turn on this milk frothing function right here. Basically, once it gets up to temperature down here, it means it's ready to make steam, and that's what we're gonna do next. And I leave the puck in because this type of espresso machine is a little bit cheaper, so it doesn't have all the features of like a really expensive machine. And one of those drawbacks of having a machine like this is the puck, when you take it out, is usually really soggy, like wet, and it's hard to like knock it out and clean it. So one thing you can do is you can leave the puck in there longer, and when it heats up, it dries up all the water, and then when you take out the puck, it's nice and dry and it comes out uh, pretty easily. So I'll show you what that looks like after we do our milk frothing. So this is, this is just my way of doing it, and people may not agree, but this is how I do it. So I got my cup here, and I need some milk. Okay, you don't need too much milk because it does froth up quite a bit. Once you have your milk and your machine is up to temperature, which we're in a, really we're just looking for this green light to turn on right here. That means it's ready to steam. We'll grab our little cup here. So I had this little metal cup. We had this start stop knob here and basically this moderates the amount of steam that's coming out. But I usually just go straight to max because that's really what you're going for. And before we do start steaming the milk, I have this metal cup here that I use to purge the system to get out any of the like water that's not steamed. So you'll see that you get quite a bit of water. Oh my god. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> it floated away. It was like, nope, I'm out. Okay, let's try that again. So I'll, I'll get out some of that water. All right, and now it's ready to steam. Once you start seeing some continuous steam come out, it's ready to go. And we stick it, stick the wand in there. And if you need to learn, it's hard to steam milk. It takes a practice. So look up a video on how to do that. Tap it a couple times, spin it around, make sure it's all evened out. And then, oops, I have to grab my sugar. So you grab some sugar, put it in there. Some sugar for the other one. Nice. Mix it up. Take our milk, make sure it's ready to go. Try to make some latte art here. Probably not gonna work. No, that didn't work. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> My latte art skills are not what they used to be. Well, that just sucks. Usually I can make latte art, today I'm just not on my game. I actually have not made latte art for a while because I just don't have time or I'm just too lazy. And I just make the espresso and drink it black. But yeah, I figured I'd show you how a milk frother works. But yeah, anyways, you get what you get. All right, you guys, after that long experience, you would think we're ready to go ahead and enjoy some delicious espresso, but you'd be wrong because we're not done yet. Remember, we left our puck in the machine. So the last step, obviously, is cleaning up after ourselves and making sure everything is good to go. So we're gonna hit the milk froth button so it turns off. We're gonna pop this guy out. And you can see here, that's what it looks like. Now, if I didn't leave 
the puck in there while I was doing my milk frothing. This would be like a big slushy watery pool of disgustingness. But since I did leave it in there, it dried up enough so that I can do this. There you go. Nice and clean. Once I've rinsed out my puck with water, I just dry it off like this. And then I take out the puck because there's water inside too, so I, I dry that off. Put that over here, dry off my puck, and I leave that over there to dry. And there you go. Now, we're almost done. We're not done yet though. The very last step is to hit the brewing espresso button one more time. I like how it says brewing espresso, like it's, it's like a verb, it's telling you what you're doing right now. You're brewing espresso as soon as you hit this. But anyways, it should say brew espresso, right? I don't know. Anyways, brewing espresso, hit that button, and we wait for some water to come out. There you go. So you do that to kind of purge out any uh, water and coffee beans that are up here, so then, then you wipe it down up here, and then you end up with some of that. Dry towel, and now you're done. You hit the off button, and you're done making espresso. Now, we can finally enjoy our beautiful cup of delicious espresso. Mamma mia, è bellissimo. It's, it's so good I must speak in Italian. Maybe I shouldn't do the accent, <laughs> but. And it sure beats going to Starbucks and spending three or four bucks on espresso drinks. And you can do a lot of stuff with this, right? Sometimes I add this to my protein shake. So I get my protein shake. It's like a mocha protein chocolate thing. It's pretty good. I wish I had better latte art skills, but this is like my latte art cup. Obviously I didn't do a very good job today. Let me try this one. Mmm, that's really good. So yeah, basically I do this every single day when I wake up and then after lunch. And that's my like sort of routine. I know it takes like five or 10 minutes, but it kind of feels good to just, you know, take a break from work, take a break from life, spend some time doing something with your hands, getting off the computer, getting off the screen, doing something like this. It feels good. It's like a little arts and crafts type of thing. You get to take a break. This setup, let's go over the price, okay? Because, you know, it, it can get pricey when you're going to espresso. Let's start with the machine. I think I already told you guys, it's 120 bucks for the machine. The grinder was 60 bucks on Amazon. Um, this, you can get cheaper campers than this one. I just wanted one that was like made in Italy and felt really cool. So this was like $35. The funnel here, I think that was like 15 bucks. This little thing, 15 bucks. And then yeah, if you get a set of espresso cups, that's like 15 bucks as well. So espresso cups, this 15. <laughs> You know, 120 bucks for your accessories, your cup, and then 120 for the machine. You're at $240 plus this grinder, which was 60 bucks. So this whole setup, oh, I forgot about the knockbox. The knockbox was like 15 bucks. So about $330 from Amazon, getting all this stuff from Amazon. Um, and the great thing is you can get it all like next day delivery. So if you have the itch to scratch, I love it. You can just get it the next day or even some of this stuff comes the same day. Um, except for this thing, this thing took forever to come in. So yeah, about 300 bucks and you've got an espresso setup, which is not bad considering the fact that a lot of espresso machines cost more than 300 bucks just for the machine. Um, and if you're not a pro and you just like want espresso, why spend more money on something that, you know, won't really make a difference in your real life use. Um, so yeah, overall, I, I've had this stuff for like six months. It works great, never had any issues, and I get to drink delicious espresso drinks every day. So yeah. That's the great thing about this. You can really experience the delicious flavors of the coffee that you buy. So it really makes a difference when you buy the right kind of coffee. It makes drinking coffee a whole new world, a whole new experience where you're really in it for the flavor and not just for that cup of joe that you throw down the hatch. So all in all, I have had a great experience and I hope you did too watching this video. Hola.